Hi, welcome to this edition of Sojourners Along the Way. I like to know what to do, but more than what to do, I really, really like to know how to do what needs to be done. And today's program is going to focus on that. The Athens City County Health Department made a visit to the Community Food Initiatives and they are going to tell us how to do some of the good things that would be very helpful for us in life. Now you've already met my dear friend, Plant Strong, but I want you to think about that. To be strong in life, we need to eat more plants. So yes, today's program is going to focus on food and the preparation of food. In fact, I'd like to suggest that you prepare ahead. Think ahead. We have holidays coming up, and even, even if it's not Thanksgiving or Christmas or Resurrection Sunday, there are special days in your life, an anniversary or a celebration of some type. Birthdays. Just saying thank you to somebody where you want to prepare a good meal. Well, I want to suggest a book that I came across and the Athens County Library has it. It's Vegan on the Cheap. Don't get thrown by the title because the title is a type of food. But they have delicious, delicious recipes in it and the book is available at the Athens County Library. But what I want to focus on for a moment is my cup that says half full or half empty. You know, many times in life, we need to change our perspective. Is the cup half full for you or is it half empty? Think about food in a different way. Think of it as protein, fruits and vegetables, not by the name that it's typically called. In today's program, you're going to learn a lot that may help you. In fact, it may even help to save your life. So actually every single recipe in here is vegan. Um, and you know, we're trying to think about other people's dietary needs. So instead of regular mashed potatoes, we have cauliflower mashed potatoes <laughs> with a vegan mushroom gravy. Um, and these were both super easy to make. Um, you know, if you're looking to do the low carb thing, if you're looking to get more cruciferous vegetables into your life, um, then the cauliflower mash is a great, a great uh, thing. It tastes good. Um, and you prepare it just like you would mashed potatoes. You just chop the cauliflower, you boil it for 10 minutes, and then I used an immersion blender and just added salt, pepper, and a fourth of a cup, no, I actually have to say a half of a cup of the cooking liquid of the cauliflower. So there's literally no butter, no oil. Um, and then the gravy, you have um, vegetable stock, a half cup of flour, um, a regular package of portobello mushrooms chopped, an onion chopped, sage, thyme, and um, nutritional yeast. And that is all you have in the gravy. I just want to touch on the base. We, we've got you covered on um, the food and also the decor this year. Um, so what we did is we took a, a butternut squash. You make sure you, you have one that stands straight up. You hollow it out and you fill it with flowers. That's all you do. If you want to do an acorn squash, that's something lower so you, can, you, know, you don't have to talk and look over your centerpiece. The only thing with that is you just chop off the bottom so it sits flat and you've got some natural um, decor for your table. And I am going to be making a mustardy sauce. So the original recipe which we tried was uh, cabbage wedges, roasted cabbage wedges with this mustard onion sauce. And they looked really good. The recipe called for butter. So a lot of times you see a recipe and, you know, oh, I don't, I don't want to use butter. What else can I use? So, you know, butter's rich. It's going to make the sauce a little bit thicker. So I decided to use, just soak some cashews and try that. It ended up tasting really, really well. Um, so I just soaked some cashews. I'm really bad at uh, following a recipe. So I just kind of made this up as I went and didn't measure anything. Um, so hopefully it turns out the same. Um, I just chopped up some onions. I just threw the onions raw in the blender. 
threw some cashews, a little bit of water, some Dijon mustard and pepper, um, and you could substitute vegetable broth for the water if you want low sodium vegetable broth as well. Um, so and what is the sauce for? For well, it's, it would be for the cabbage, but we did the we're doing Brussels sprouts, so you can just put them, you know, put it right over top of your Brussels sprouts. Okay. Added some garlic. So I'm just putting raw onion in here. Yeah, that's fine. And probably I used maybe a half a cup, fourth to a half a cup of making a mess of soaked cashews. Some water. I think the recipe calls for a tablespoon of mustard, but I like it a little mustardy, so I used more, probably closer to two. And then just some black pepper. So no oil, no butter, no salt. And if you wanted to, you could add some red pepper flakes or some hot sauce. And if you have a food processor, a blender works fine. Vitamix would be ideal. But really anything just to make it So we can pass out some carrots. What's nice about the carrots is that you don't even have to peel them. You can just put them right in the oven. I mean, wash them and just put them right in the oven. And they're really tender and great and wonderful with rosemary on them. So both the um, Brussels sprouts and carrots, and even if you were to use cabbage, you know, just cutting the cabbage and make into wedges and just putting them in the oven. Minimal olive oil. I have a mister. I don't know if you've ever seen the misters mm -hmm. where you can just put olive oil or whatever oil in there. You just kind of pump it and then you just spray it on. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's a mist rather than, you know, getting a lot of olive oil. It just, it's really easy to get minimal oil if you are going to cook with oil with the mist. That on the cabbage um, and the reason why we did the Brussels sprouts is because it's more, there's more for people to try and they don't fall apart as much as a cabbage would. Ruth actually already made the dressing but it's just a, a, a ginger and pomegranate dressing which is in the refrigerator and it calls for arugula yeah. uh, but we just got some baby kale <laughs> and what's nice about this salad is that you can kind of put, you know, get all the ingredients ready and, you know, make it. So it would be a, a good salad to bring if you were going somewhere, you know, and wanted to bring something. Uh, you, you can use any type of squash that you want. Um, Ideally, we wanted to use delicata squash. We couldn't find any, uh, so we used an acorn squash and just cooked it. Um, what's nice about a delicata squash is that the skin is really tender, so you just eat the skin. The acorn squash actually, when you cook it, we can. It's kind of it's the same. Um, so uh, just you know, having the ingredients ahead of time done makes for a really easy salad. So just throwing some greens in a bowl. Our squash. I think that it was news to me that you could eat the skin of squash. Generally I feel like we scoop out butternut squash, acorn squash, and then when I came across delicata squash I was, it was like a miracle. But guess what? It's no big deal.
big surprise, you can eat all those squash skins, really. And we'll eat some butternut squash skin today. That's And this is uh, acorn squash as well that I don't think you'll have any problem eating. There is pomegranate seeds in the salad as well as in some pomegranate juice in the dressing. And what else is in the dressing is, or in the salad, is some roasted pumpkin seeds. Correct? Pumpkin seeds. And with the squash, um, just, I think Ruth just pan seared it and put a, just a tiny bit of maple syrup. No oil, nothing other than just a little bit of maple syrup. <laughs> How you cook the squash? So just in a just in a skillet, so in the pan. You could you could roast it if you wanted, mm -hmm. but you could also just cook it in the pan. So you kind of cut, and she just drizzled a little a little bit of maple syrup. Okay. No oil, anything else, just a little maple syrup, and until it gets soft. yeah, until it's soft and tender. Yeah. And I added a, a little bit of water to steam it as well. So, um, I let it brown first a little bit. So you flip them too? Called for oil, which would make it a little thicker consistency, but you can or use that if you want, but we chose to not have any oil. So here is our salad. Heard of a turducken. So it's a turkey stuffed with a duck, a deboned turkey, stuffed with a deboned duck, stuffed with a deboned chicken. We are doing a plant-based version of that, which is a veg duckin, which actually doesn't have any ducks or chickens in it at all, but it is a butternut squash stuffed with an eggplant, stuffed with a zucchini. So we've already prepared it for you, but uh, Ruth is going to show us how she did it, because Ruth is the master chef here. She, she actually cooked this for us on Tuesday, and it was delicious. So you just use some brown rice and um, the stuffing, or the insides of the squash, and kind of, you know, as the filling, and it's absolutely delicious. And what's nice about it is, you know, we had just a small piece of it, and it was really filling. So, you know, you think about Thanksgiving and, and that, you know, rich meal that you have with your family, and everyone's, you know, usually overstuffed, and it's not necessarily the best food, but you can still feel satisfied having healthy options on Thanksgiving. And this, the veg duckin' was definitely one of those things that really filled you up and was really satisfying that you're like, that was a great meal. And what's also nice about the veg duckin' is it takes a little while to cook. So you're cooking for, you know, two hours. Kind of the same process of stuffing a turkey. And it's it's very uh it's very roast like too because you tie it up like you would a roast. Yeah. And you can put gravy over it just like you would turkey. So we used this gravy when we tried it earlier this week. And just throwing in one tidbit about this gravy, if you add an extra half cup of flour, I found that that is basically like instead of the um, if you wanted to do a green bean casserole instead of using the Campbell's. Um, cream of mushroom soup, if you just double the flour that's on the paper here, it makes very, it's very much like um, something you would find to do a green bean casserole. So, so let's do it. Let's, let's, do it. <laughs> let's make the magic happen. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about the big stuff. I'll tell you that um, the first time I, I tried this, I almost cried because I'm like, this is too hard. <laughs> but I was determined. So I have suffered for all of you, so now you can do this without any problem at all. Um, the first thing I, I want you to, to think about when, when you start to approach this project is think about how long it takes to debone a duck and a chicken and stuff them into a turkey. That's going to take some time, right? So think of that. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you, but they do it. That's, so this is what we're not doing. Um, and so the first step 
that I learned is you have to have a sharp knife. <laughs> Without a sharp knife, don't even try. Don't even try. Um, so here we go. We're going to cut the ends off of here. And the thing I learned too in by my third try is the, to use the pressure of the knife, right? So you're cutting something, but really what you're doing here is more like cracking something. So think of a piece of wood as, a po or, um, as opposed to a celery stalk, okay? So it's hard and you're just going to have to work through it. Um, but again, you can use the, the gravity, a little bit of gravity, and um, I just like to make a line so that I can guide myself here. I found a nice long serrated knife. Does you, the job. You use a serrated knife, and I tried a serrated knife, and I felt like that was too hard. Granted, mm -hmm. I haven't done one of those since last fall, I think. So okay. that's what I used to cut through it. Well, you're much stronger than I, evidently. So again, I'm, I'm putting pressure, and I'm pushing the knife. I'm not trying to saw this thing in half. We're just going to push. And I do want to show you something else that I know is very important. Does anybody have one of these? Oh, oh, yes, I want you to put it on. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of like chainmail glove. Yes, and you know what? I, the first time I used it was the other day, and I thought, well, I'll just wash it like I'm washing my hands. Well, I just took the skin off of my hands. Oh. So don't do that either. <laughs> all right, we're learning all kinds of things in this project. So again, we're just gonna push this thing down. Now, we're getting close to that hollow spot down there, and we can just, and now it's easy. We've done the hard work. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. We're going to scoop out the seeds. And I, I'm not going to take you all the way down because um, you'll all be gone by the time I get done. So it does take a little bit of time, but I have this is a process that might take you 20 minutes to half an hour. But again, think about deboning those birds, right? Yeah. I mean, this is your commitment to health and coolness. I don't know. Just being creative. <laughs> so let me tell you what else I did wrong in this project so that you don't get frustrated and try this. So I thought, this, is, this flush is kind of hard. I think I will cook it a little bit first. And then I'll cut through it. But what happens is it cooks on the outside and not the inside. So when you try to get to the inside of the squash, you're smashing the outside of the squash, OK? So lesson learned. All right. So then I kind of did a little, um, just a little line, right? So I want to hollow out this entire butternut squash. So I'm going to cut it out. The first time I did this, I, I started here in this same kind of outline. And then I, in my mind, I thought, well, I'll just create a grid. Slice it this way, slice it that way. It doesn't work. So again, just a little bit of advice. But this is, seems to be the best way for me. So I made that initial cut. And I'm just going to go around, again, just a little bit deeper. Feeling confident with my glove on, too. Just want you to know. <laughs> really confident. Where did you get the glove? Um, at a cooking store in Marietta. The cook shop. The cook shop. Yeah. That's where I got it. Using the pressure of a knife. Think about carving. You know, a bar of soap or a piece of wood. You're going to chip out the inside of this. Um, so again, don't try to go deep. Um, keep it shallow. And just kind of pop it out. So those thin little, I learned a lot for you all. <laughs> so again, so this is easy. Turn it over. So, you know, I think, I think the, the trick is that you, and again, I'm going to try as, as well, and I tried that too. <laughs> I've tried the spoon. In fact, I yeah. think, I'm trying to think of all the ki kitchen implements I used. I think what, what, I. What about an ice cream scoop? Those are pretty tough. I used an ice cream scoop. <laughs> I used a kitchen spoon. I used like a grapefruit. Heavy duty. What? Like a grapefruit spoon. 
see? Oh, I think that, that would be a good finisher. That would be a really good finisher. But um, anyway, so I, I tried all those. But what I really found works the best, and it seems to be the, less, the least amount of frustration, is sh just these shallow kind of chips that come out. And so, you know, 30 minutes later, <laughs> we have TV magic. TV magic. Bye bye. Oh, that is nice. That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> so that's pretty. All right. I was thinking about working on carving these out and, and giving these away as a prize. That would that would be a pretty valued. Yeah, now that I have the skills. So in this in this dish too, you would want to save all the flesh inside that butternut squash because we're going to use it all. It's all going back into the stuffing. And the seeds. And the, uh, not the seeds. Thank you for that point. We are not saving the seeds. You could roast them. You could roast them, and you could put them then back in the stuffing. That would be really yummy. I did not do that, but that's a good idea. I'm not sure I would like that, like that as my stuffing. Stuffing's not supposed to be crunchy. Yeah. No, I think that that sounds wonderful. All right, so you know what this yeah. is, right? Is <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> This is the next layer, so right? This is going to fit inside. Here, the nice thing about eggplant is that you can really squish it. <laughs> Ideally, though, if you are at the store and you're buying the butternut squash, the eggplant, and the zucchini, you want to look first of all for a butternut squash that's wide at both the top and the bottom. Then you want to find an eggplant that you think will fit inside. So just do yes. do a visual check at the grocery store for the compatibility of all those three things, <laughs> so that it'll fit in inside easier when you get home. Mm -hmm. That that is a really good suggestion. I, if you can do that, I would do that. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what's hard though is um, finding a squash that's wide on top, a butternut yeah. squash that's wide on top. I'm pretty sure I have eyeballed every butternut squash in the county, <laughs> so I know what's out there. Um, I'm pretty sure Megan, that, that, that could have worked pretty well, actually. That wouldn't have been too bad, but... Um, that was a big butternut squash. That was a squash. big squash. Yeah, I, I think, I forget where I was yesterday, but I saw like three butternut squash in a basket. All right, so let's just do this one and call it good. Let's check it and see how it fits. <laughs> it's a little bit big. We can, we can make it smaller. So the butternut squash is in the stuffing. Also some brown rice. So we cook some onions and some mushrooms. Um, we're going to cook this wash. Are there pecans in this one? I know there are pecans in the lentil loaf. Does it say? I don't think, uh, I don't think there are pecans. I'm just going to trim this guy a little tiny bit. You save the eggplant inside? Yes. We, I, and you could put them in your stuffing if you wanted to. I just threw them in the freezer. <coughs> so, all right, look at that. See how that's coming along? We're getting close. And you know what? It's, it's totally fine. It doesn't have to, like, fit exactly. But I'm getting a little bit, I don't know. I want it to fit nicely. We've got a camera going. <laughs> okay, that, I'm happy with that. So we'll get our zucchini in there. Um, you know, the recipe called for a green onion, like in the very middle, in the very center. We did that the first time. Did you like it? Because you got the majority of the green onion. I liked center. it, and I thought it was pretty. Okay. <laughs> I just, I don't know what bothered me about the green onion. I think that it was wilt. It wilts when oh, it just and it comes out so in a string, mm -hmm. and so I, I didn't put anything in the center, but I bet something that you could put in there, you could probably do a carrot. But again, you'd want something that cooks fast, and you're not going to eat any of this. So I'm not. I washed my hands, but I still don't have any gloves on. But you're not eating this one anyway. All right, here we go. Are you excited about this? Yes. <laughs> All right. 
So let's, I'm going to flip this one since it's a little bit wider. We are going to, you just handed me, okay, here we go. So here it is, this beautiful uh, stuffing. Again, you're sauteing some onions, um, some mushrooms, We've got some brown rice in here, the, the meat of the butternut squash. There are some cranberries in the one that we're going to try. So you can put cranberries or raisins in there. So let's spread it out. I'll, t I'll tell you something else that I did so that you don't have to do. I had a little bit of leftover stuffing and I thought I'm going to see if a spaghetti squash works as well. It doesn't. It's just too watery. It just mm -hmm. so, which it was really a disappointment because it already has that nice cavity that you don't have to dig out. All right, so we've got our eggplant layer in there. We're gonna keep on going, and you can put as much in here as you want. Again, you could stick a green onion in the center, or. Um, Maybe even some sprigs of thyme or something right down the center of that, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. So ultimately, you're going to have something that looks like this. And you're going to have another one that looks the same. They're going to be piled up on each other like that. You're getting excited. I, I like that. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And we have some butcher string in here. Tear it off. Tie it up so that it stays in the oven. And I put about three ties. Here's one. But I, I put three in there. I make my husband hold the, the center so I can. Okay, now. Do you have to score the bottom so it doesn't keep rolling? I don't. You know what I did? I. You could, if you wanted to do that. You could do that. Um, <clears throat> I had in my. The, the, the one we're going to have to stay nicely, but the first one I had, I just put upside down little uh, glass cups. What do you call those little tiny? Um, Pyrex. Little Pyrex cups. I just set them on either side mm -hmm. so that they stayed up. Oh. And it was fine. So there it is. And the big reveal. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. Whoa. That's it. <laughs> Nice, huh? Do you want to try it? Yes. Yeah. All right, we'll try it. And again, the ovens here are very hot. I cooked mine for almost two hours at home, and um, it was done in an hour and over, almost on the verge of overdone, really, honestly. So, um, and what did you brush on it? Oh, that's the that's the secret. This, so, this is a question for Arlene Basil. Do you know what aquafaba is? Yeah, you use the chickpea liquid and sugar. Well, just chickpea. Yeah, I just use chickpea liquid and garlic. Oh, just really? The, just chick chickpea liquid and garlic. Okay. Yep. So this was another recipe that if you Googled veg duckin, it would have you, you know, do each layer with garlic butter, oh. maple butter, and then put the stuffing, <laughs> and then the next eggplant and the same thing, you know, and then the outside with the butter, so you can always make substitutes to recipes no. you find. With the substitute, the aqua aquafaba. Aqua yeah. So just chickpea water. Yeah. Okay. So let me cut this up in just a minute. Um, it's 620. Let me, let me just walk you through the next one. Isn't that nice of me? Hold you in suspense. Um, let me just walk you through the next Ruth, I have a quick question. Okay. Now you filled one half, but basically, do you fill both halves? Mo yes, I do fill both halves. Okay. Yes. Is yes. So it kind of stood pretty tall oh, on top of each other. That was a good question. Um, so let me let me bring this guy forward. This is the wrapped lentil loaf. Um, I'm just I'm just gonna show folks what it looks like. So I don't know if you can see it from where you are. Oh, it's pretty. So, so um, the way the recipe, the original recipe, had a, um, a puff pastry. So wrapped in a puff pastry. 
But we were going to, um, what we really wanted to do was make pumpkin sage biscuits. So instead of the, the, um, the, the uh, pastry. pastry. What is it? Is it a pastry? Yeah, just a puff pastry. pastry. Yeah, puff like pastry. Dough. So instead of the puff pastry, we made the um, the pumpkin sage biscuit dough. Mm -hmm. Rolled it out and wrapped it up, and just kind of wove it over top of the lentil loaf. Mm -hmm. um, and the the pumpkin sage biscuits are good themselves too. Mm -hmm. So try those out, even if you don't try the lentil loaf or do both. They're really good. Yeah, again, a little bit of gravy on something like either one of these would be nice, would be really nice. And we just cut out some flour or leaves to go on top as well. So, and again, so this is a mushroom-based product too, or lentils and mushrooms. Um, we also use carrots and celery and onions in here. Uh, and we did, it's, I think the recipe calls for flour in the veg duckin stuffing, and, and breadcrumbs in this lentil loaf, and we did use brown rice uh, breadcrumbs in both. So, so the inside of this is gluten-free, and the vegetable is gluten-free as well. So we just wanted to bring that to your attention. Mm -hmm. um, so what I wanted to do, if, you, if we have time, if you think we have time, first of all, let's, let's eat something. <laughs> Since it's all up here, we'll cut it. You can come up and have some salad and some of these things, and then I'll show you how to wrap a lentil loaf. How does that sound? And then, <laughs> and then we will talk about some desserts. desserts. Shall we? Yes. How's that sound? Okay, so we'll take a quick break. <laughs> mm -hmm. So again, this is um, this is a batch of pumpkin sage biscuit dough. We used one recipe of lentil loaf and one recipe of biscuit dough to make two loaves. All right? Mm -hmm. The same size. The same size. What we just ate? Yep. It's a lot. It is a lot, so mm -hmm. you could half it for sure. We could freeze it. You could freeze it. Mm -hmm. Then you have meals another time. Mm -hmm. You can make, or you can just make this. Yeah. You know what I? They I were really good in chili. We made a pump, or Ruth had made a pumpkin chili, pumpkin and bean chili in a crock pot, and just even crumbling them up in the chili was really good. Mm -hmm. They were good. All right. So I'll do this pretty quick so you can just see the, the technique. One thing you want to make sure you're doing, um, too, when you're, you're practicing this loaf is you want to make sure that it's not stuck to your paper. That ruins everything. I always have that problem with sugar cookies. Yes, just like that. So my mom and Lola use this like spatula. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That sounds great. Yeah. All right. So really, um, you could go pretty thin here. You go pretty thin on this. And here's the second part. Do you want some of this to take home without anything on it? It's delicious. Do you want some without any? Only if you have extra. Uh, let's. But yeah, otherwise, it's fine. Um, let's see. Okay. We've got some saute, and again, saute, I say saute, really steaming the onions and carrots and celery in a little bit of water works great. You're not diminishing any of the flavor by not using oil to soften those vegetables. Um, and again, we also toasted some nuts. Maybe you can taste, there's some pecans and walnuts toasted in here before. And so here we go. And, and some pump and um, poultry seasoning, right? But I used some sage and uh, thyme, I believe it was. I think the recipe calls for poultry seasoning, which I think is just sage and thyme. <laughs> Already put together. All right, so here we are. We're just 
I think I, the reason I like these, uh, these particular dishes is they're kind of artistic. And it's funny, we were, we were talking to some of our coworkers at the health department today, and one of them, one of the nurses said, oh, I had a lentil loaf before, and I didn't really like it. And then that turned into, well, it tasted good, but it didn't look very good. It was, looked better than it tasted. And what's nice about the wrap is that, yeah, the lentil loaf does look, doesn't look super appetizing, at least as, as tasty as it really is. It is, you know, browner, and, mm -hmm. and so with this wrap, it looks really beautiful. And so for someone who, you know, that site is a lot of, you know, I'm going to like this or not, or this looks like a good dish or not, it's, a, it's beautiful. And, you know, and the funny thing about that comment is that, um, what color is meatloaf? I know, right? <laughs> it's, it's brown and too, red. I mean. <laughs> so, looks all right. Worse. So here we are, and I have way more uh, meat than I need. So I'm I'm gonna wrap it, tuck it in on the ends. So here's my little my little end tuck here. You can see. All right, and then I'm gonna start a diagonal slice. So we're just gonna cut some the dough this way. And again, this this is way more dough than we need. We could probably trim some of this, but we'll just. Not for the sake of time. Okay, so there we go. And we're not going to get rid of these little pieces of dough because that is what we take our leaves from. So, and if you have cookie cutters, you could do a turkey or you could do something else. And I do Christmas like mm -hmm. mm -hmm. or little, little. Christmas tree, there's some ornaments. Yep, I, and I have these little cookie cutters that are really tiny. Little tiny leaves, little tiny pumpkins. All right, let's just that a little bit. Do you think you can use cornstarch in the gravy to make some Yes, you could. Mm -hmm. All right, and so this is it. We're just going back and forth. And again, we could really trim back this dough so that it's not so thick, but it's super simple. Yeah. People are like, wow, what did you do? Did you do like put like apples inside or something like those fruit? That would be fruit nice. Instead of an apple pie, you could do something like that. That's what I think about it when I see that. I think about those, like, yeah. apples. Yes. Instead of pumpkin sage, I mean, I guess you could do sage, but even if you did a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg and did apples in the middle, for sure. Instead of pumpkin pie, you could do something like that. You know, and I, the more I do, um, and even those rosemary cookies are a good example today, I think sweet and savory are very good companions. You know, just maybe rosemary and apples are great. We should try it. So I'm just going to cut these little leaves with this dough and not really try to do it, do not try to spend too much time doing it. These leaves that come in all shapes and sizes, right? Here's a, here's a little skinny one. So they stay, you just lay them on there, you don't have yep. to stick them? Nope. Well, you know what, I'll show you what we're going to do next. I'll just do a couple more. Yeah. Actually, it lifts up pretty nicely. So I'm just cutting a rough shape, a little score down the center, and then some leaf marks just like that. Mm -hmm. I'll do one more. You're gonna you're gonna make little pastry shapes now, aren't you? <laughs> On everything. You should. <laughs> you absolutely should. My grandmother used to make something with, although she would just put cinnamon and sugar on all the leftover dough. That's what we would do, that's what my mom used to do. Like little turkeys. Yeah. Leaves. Okay. So there. How about that? Oh, you like that? Yeah. No. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay, and then I have a little bit of almond milk that I'm just going to... 
just mm. brush it a little bit. And then it's going to go in the oven. And this probably will help it stick a little bit. Mm. Yeah, why is that? This looks delicious, right? A little, <laughs> little slap of almond milk. Mm. <laughs> some of that extra flour off too. All right, and there you have it. And again, you don't have to have this pastry on it at all. But if you're trying to do something that's a little bit different, if you're already doing them, um, you already have dazzled your family with lentil loaf in the past, you could <laughs> bring it up a notch with a little puff pastry. And that's how you wrap it. All right? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so to answer your question about the gravy, <laughs> um, you can make the gravy gluten free. And in fact, the original recipe was gluten free. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't have a lot of experience cooking with cornstarch. Mm -hmm. But this is an adapted version. If you just Google Whole Foods mushroom vegan gravy, the, re the original recipe actually calls for cornstarch instead of the flour. Mm -hmm. It actually has some other things like tamari in it, uh, soy sauce, mm -hmm. um, that I just didn't add in. So you can get the proper measure measurements offline when you go home. All right. Let's, Crystal, you want to? Yeah. Do yeah. Think? So some people took some of these cookies up here. If anyone else wants to try some, um, they're just either the rosemary chocolate cookies. So um, they, if you don't like rosemary, you don't like them because they have a lot of flavor to them with the rosemary. And they are vegan, so we kind of reduce the sugar in them too and um, replace some of the oil with applesauce and pumpkin, so lower fat, lower sugar, and I think they taste great. They have a lot of flavor. They have some semi-sweet chocolate chips in them. So one interesting thing that we, when we tried them at the office, is that when you first bite into it, you kind of, it kind of gets that like chocolate, that mint chocolate taste, even though it's the rosemary, and then you get the rosemary later on. So that was something interesting that we found. But, um, and since they are vegan, I mean, if people, if you guys have cooked vegan before, you know, they aren't going to get like a crispy chocolate chip cookie. It's just going to be softer texture because um, you're not getting all that butter, like the butter in there. So, but if you can get used to it and you like it, then, and, and you, you like it. So, those are the rosemary chocolate chip cookies. Should I pass them around? Yes. yes. You guys, <laughs> does anybody get a chance to try Is that polite of her for asking? In your cookbook, you have a recipe for a fruit pie, right? Mm -hmm. So, we just made the crust. The crust is pretty straightforward. Your nuts and dates and vanilla and all the, you know, Plus things in a food processor. You know what? My um, so here's a tip on that. If you really want your nuts to be fine, blend them first. Don't try to put your nuts in the same processor with your dates. They won't grind as well. So grind your nuts and then you can add your dates. Um, I kind of like a little bit of chunk in mine. So I have some bigger pieces. And this this. Um, Okay, so this is the fruit pie, and we're just going to add fruit. What we have here, we have persimmon, um, apple, and uh, clementines. All right, and this is all. This is the whole thing. We're going to just layer <laughs> our fruit. Um, and if you've never had a persimmon, there are different kinds of persimmons, and. Um, if you, and I can't remember the name, the, the name of this one, Fuyu. Fuyu. So this is, this, if you, I'm going to pass this uh, persimmon around. Unfortunately, the persimmons I bought were firm. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and you can get away with that with a food. A Fuyu? A Fuyu. So, pass that around. You can get away with that with the fuyu, but you cannot get away with that with the hachia. Hachia. I, I had one of those. And I, I feel like, I don't know, like I swallowed cotton. Everybody I mean, there was moisture extracted from my throat. I it just, I mean, I can't, it's a sensation I can't accurately describe. It has to be mush. It has to be mush. So, I'll tell you, I do have some of those. I found, um, actually, Pete Chu had some of those at the farmer's market. And I bought them, and they just look like a pile. 
they're like falling apart. It, it doesn't even look like one piece of fruit. They all just kind of have melted together. I have thrown those in my freezer, and they're going to go in my blender with a little bit of light coconut milk, and it's going to be magical, I'm oh. sure. Also, so, Ruth, I really like the, um, the really soft hachia with some a really ripe banana. Ooh. Blending those two make a good sauce for anything. A good sauce. That sounds really good. That sounds really good. All right, so this is it. I'm just going to continue to layer these guys. I'm going to put a little cinnamon and um, ginger on here. You could, What's that? Persimmons, they do have them, but you can get them at the farmer's market, too. Okay. Yep. You know where else I saw them, too, is the Asian market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I don't shop there often. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> you could, if you wanted to, just eat this right now. Or you could heat it up. And that's, that's good, too. But that's, this is all there is. And you know what? We could have added pears. And that would have been really good. All right. That's basically... It. Where's my cinnamon? Where's my cinnamon? Oh, here, I'll take yeah. your cinnamon. Yeah. A little cinnamon. Because that's pretty. You know, sometimes I'll just cut up apples or oranges and put a little cinnamon on them. So good. So a little ginger. <laughs> and again, I cardamom would also be nice on here. You can cut this and eat it now, or you can bake it. Yeah, that's not pretty and so simple. And that's not all. There's more. So the last dessert is a chai spice pumpkin bar. So if you've ever had chai tea, it's it's like the texture of pumpkin pie but with a little extra spice to it. So for the crust, I've put the crust is pretty easy. It's just a half cup each of the oats, shredded coconut and um, the pumpkin seeds, and then I put some cinnamon and a tiny bit of salt, and then, um, so you're gonna kind of chop this up. I have a uh, little magic bullet, so you can, And those are these are the dates for the crust, yeah. So and you want to get it a little bit blended together, but it's not going to be completely blended. They're resistant to we're talking about dates. Yeah. So, yeah, soaking them really helps you for everything. Okay, so, so it says to put parchment paper on the bottom if you have it eight by eight. It calls Do you want this back? I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know. It calls for parchment paper, but this is pretty heavy. This is kind of hard to press down. This is what you took this for, right? Yeah, so Sorry. this this just makes it, if you line the pan, it just will make it easier to come up because this is a no-bake dessert, so it kind of, it's a little sticky, so it's hard to kind of come off of the pan and get it separated. <laughs> okay, so... This is the pumpkin bar? Yes, this is the pumpkin bar. Okay, so then your crust you can just dump on there. And it should be easy enough to um, kind of push down with your hands. And you're, you're going to have to like push the dates in there. Um, are we going to serve this today? What, what do you think? <laughs> what do you, you all? Have to dryer, but if 
you just push down the dates, we'll get it all. Um, <laughs> we'll get it stuck together. So once you cover the bottom of the pan, it, you should put it in the freezer so that it can get a little harder. And yeah, a cup and a half of pumpkin, which is probably basically whatever. It's probably this that's in here. You probably use the uh, butternut squash instead of pumpkin. Yeah, it's a mm. mm. So it's just canned pumpkin. So you put the pumpkin and yeah. maple syrup, a third cup is, I'll put a half cup, or less than, a little less than a half cup. So let's put the maple syrup in there, and a fourth cup of coconut oil, and the maple syrup, oh it's pretty soft, you're right. <laughs> So, yeah. Cooking up a storm in here. Okay. So, okay. And with coconut oil, you don't want to get the refined coconut oil that you would see, like the Lou Anne. You want to make sure that it's the um, the unrefined coconut oil. And with anything, you know, we're making desserts and sometimes we think, oh, well, they're healthier for me so I can eat more than them, you know, more than I would another dessert. But, you know, these are treats. They're meant to be, yeah, they're sometimes foods and they're meant to be eaten in moderation. And, you know, you think about coconut oil, I mean, it's predominantly fat. So that's not something that you want to be consuming mass quantities of. So with anything, you know, we love our desserts, we love making them at plant-based, but they're still desserts and they're still meant to be treats for special occasions. So then I have all the spices measured out in here. And so that's just the same thing. You just put everything in there except the coconut flour and you just are going to blend it up. <laughs> The thing I love about watching her do this is she knows how to handle her tools, right? <laughs> so you can open it and kind of mix it to the bottom. Because sometimes it has trouble. Mm -hmm. The bottom doesn't come all the way up. Okay. If you had an immersion blender, that would be also good, really easy. Yeah, yeah. or any like right <laughs> an immersion blenders processor. are. I mean, you can get one for probably twenty bucks. Yeah. So. Plus 1995, I spent. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I used for the mashed potatoes or the cauliflower no. mashed potatoes. Yeah. So also two tablespoons of coconut flour. Good. We're a little bit too. I think exactly. Tomatoes. Uh, no, I think this will be good. A cauliflower brown. What's it called for? Yeah. It really is. So, two tablespoons of coconut flour. And. Can I can I talk about something, another dessert while you're finishing up on that one? Megan found this recipe for caramel, and again, for this is sometimes no food, <laughs> way sometimes. Um, somebody's already put their fork in there. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but so, so I doubled the recipe, but really one recipe, and I think it, I think we put it in your cookbook as like a, a turtle recipe, yeah. right? A couple of nuts, a little caramel, and some chocolate. You don't need any of that. You could have a little bit of this caramel. I've had some apples for you to try it with. Um, so this is just four dates, a quarter cup of maple syrup, um, a tablespoon of almond butter, and a tablespoon of coconut oil. I have also made it with unsweetened coconut instead of the coconut oil, and I like it just the same. But so again, a more gritty. It's a little t has more texture. Yeah. Unsweetened coconut instead of coconut oil. Instead of coconut oil. 
if you're having it. And it's good. It's really good. But um, this is the recipe. But this, I think, too, um, I, first of all, I love these jars. I collect these um, if I can find them. But this would make a nice gift. Here's some caramel, right? Um, and maybe you like a basket of apples. Put it in. This is double batch. Yep. But I want you to try that as well. So when you come up, um, we'll put a spoon in here, take a couple of apples for you to try. All right? And if you want to make turtles, feel free. Feel free to do that. A turtle? You know, a turtle never do that. It's a couple of pecans, couple of pecans, a little blob of caramel, and then a little just of chocolate on top. Of it's like a candy. You're like a homemade candy. They tasted so good. It was hard to believe that they were vegan and but again, yeah. energy yeah. dense. Yeah. It was hard to believe that they were sometimes foods. <laughs> <laughs> they were good. Okay. So, so do you want your crust? Yeah, so we can get the crust out and spread it around. I want to say, can I say something about the ice cream in the freezer? Yeah. <laughs> I do. I do want to say that. They're mostly full. I mean, people took like two or three bites and they're just back in the freezer. People leave them in there yeah. for a long time. Really? So they, I think that's the way to go. Like, if you want a little bit of something, you have two tastes and <laughs> forget about it in the freezer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's okay. I think no, it was good. not as you know, um, Yeah. <laughs> so I think if you freeze it or um, keep it in the refrigerator a long time, you yeah. can slice it and get squares. But yeah. I think we'll, we'll just spoon it out, and it'll be just as good. Yeah, yeah it's one of those things you could serve chilled, almost slightly frozen. Mm -hmm. Or it would be, you know, a different kind of dessert, but it's still going to be good at this temperature. Yeah. But what do you think of the rosemary yeah. cookies? <laughs> really good. So yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Did anyone else... Uh, like they're eating a chocolate mint. Did you taste that first? I didn't like think yeah. it. Until yeah. You it. It's almost like we're There's used to I'm having before. those two flavors together. Yeah. So yeah. you think you're having that, and then it's like, no, nope. wait a minute, this is something. It's rosemary. Mm -hmm. and the texture was very good too. Like I like yeah. chewy cookies. I do too. I do too. Yeah. I like chewy cookies too. Like chewy cookies too. Oh. So those were like the perfect. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's a good tip to talk about when you're baking without oils. It's a different. It's a different cookie, right? You're not going to get something that's crispy and crunchy on the outside. And so if you start experimenting with substitutions, you're using applesauce or bananas, or even pumpkin as a substitute. Uh, just don't bake it as long or lower your temperature a little bit. Um, just don't overbake. Underbake, if anything, that's my recommendation. And they're, however you put them on the pan is how they're going to stay for the most part. So if you want, you know, certain size cookies or if you want them to look some type of way, make sure it looks like that before you, you know, when you put it in the oven because they'll look exactly like that on the way out. Mm. They don't no matter how they look, they're just as good. So. <laughs> so, so ideally you would want to put this in the refrigerator for six hours or overnight. I did overnight and then... Um, yeah, so then it'll be a little bit more together. But if you want, if you want to try some now, you're welcome to. to try the chai flavoring. Have you ever had someone said it tastes like the pumpkin chai latte at Donkey? Yeah. That's what someone told us. That it tastes yeah. like that. We tried some of these on Tuesday, just to see how they were. So. And they were good. We did it for you. Yeah. <laughs> I had two cookies just to make sure that they were good enough for this. Yeah.